Hey everybody, Texas Truck Airlines is performing shop along the styremopires.com. Monday night after work, 7.46 p.m. is the time. And uh, where we previously left off part seven, we got rid of the kicker. It is gone, we got it cleared out. All I've done since then, kind of laid down some towels and all the ports, like I said we would. Uh, tried to clean up a little bit of the dust, debris, keep all that gunk out of there. You can see the distributor. Uh, you can see back there, it's probably the oil pressure sending unit. I'm not sure where the crank position sensor is either. Uh, I think they may both be back there. <laughs> but, uh, nonetheless, when we're down in the engine bay, that's still where I stand. We actually kind of have good access to that. And the other perk of that, we're ready at this point in time to remove the engine from the transmission. And uh, this is going to be something that will be absurdly difficult for me to film. Again, if the truck was up on a lift, I could do a fantastic job. It's not. The camera is huge. I'll be on a creeper. Uh, even though the truck is lifted from the factory, it's still far from ideal. Uh, so I don't know if I'll have like pictures up or what exactly. But I'm going to try to kind of narrate what I think we're going to do. And then I'll attempt to film it. And depending on how that goes, we'll make do with what we can. So, bell housing bolts. Okay, this is going to be where the transmission essentially bolts up to the back of the block. Right. Uh, we should, with the intake removed, have better access to the top side of those bolts. Uh, those are historically what would give you nightmares, like if you were just coming in and going to pull your transmission, drop it down. Those are the bolts you would be cussing with the intake manifold off. That may give us an advantage there. Um, we'll hit those eventually. There are the braces, if you recall, running from the transmission to the side of the block. And uh, those aren't too terribly bad. What we have down there, you can see kind of where the uh, Y pipe is, right? And then in front of that, towards the block, you'll see the two trans cooler lines, sort of like the shiny silver stuff. And then we've got the starter. From the engine bay now, with everything kind of out, our, out of our way, we may be able to come in sort of where the exhaust manifolds were above that heat shield and have a pretty easy line of sight to that top bolt on the starter. Again, from underneath the truck, that would be the one that would give you trouble with half of your vehicle dismantled uh, and the exhaust manifolds in particular gone from the engine bay. We actually get a much better range right there. So. That's going to be something we're going to contend with, removing the starter. We're going to have to remove the inspection cover, the dust shield, whatever you want to call it, from the transmission. That shouldn't give us too much trouble. Uh, those bolts are typically covered in grease and oil and therefore not rusty or seized, plus it's an aluminum transmission housing. Once we get that off, we're going to need to come in and from the crank bolt right down here, right? This is your crank pulley, that's your crank bolt. Uh, we might pull a couple of plugs, or at least one of them, that'll make it easier for us to turn the engine over. The reason we need to turn the engine over is we've got four bolts, unless things have changed up for the Magnum, that are going to be holding the torque converter to the flex plate, essentially. And so we kind of need to get all of that taken care of. Now, real quickly, something I know I can sort of show you is right here. This is a 727. That would be off of a a big block of 440 pairing, but it's kind of the same pattern if I'm not mistaken. The Magnum might have some slight differences. I've never had the tranny out, so I can't say for certain, but uh, these bolts that you see here, that's stuff that we're gonna have to hit, right? Uh, these two with the intake manifold gone, assuming they're still in roughly the same location, we're gonna be golden. Where you see these four pads, you've got one, two, three and four uh, on the front there. That is actually what we're going to need to rotate the engine for in order to access and thread out. So that'll be interesting. These bottom, I believe it's just the bottom four, that's where the inspection cover is going to be. Uh, once we take that off, at whatever point you can get to it best, whether it's kind of clocked here, straight up and down, clocked this direction, you'll be able to get up in there, start threading these out, then we turn the crank, ultimately rotate the converter, and have access to the remaining three. We'll just cycle through that. Uh, there's a chance we might have to do some stuff with the dipstick and some linkages to get access to the bolts. Again, I'll try to commentate on that as best I can once I've done so. Uh, again, right now I'm just kind of shooting in the dark, kind of going with what we have here visually. <laughs> but, uh, let's see here. Also, pile right here. 
That is a giant starter. That's the old gear reduction signature Chrysler sound, right? Mini starter is going to be fractions of that size, which is nice. And right here, if you can kind of see it, the cruddy looking thing, that is an inspection cover that came off that transmission. Uh, so that's what we're going to be removing from the truck here. And then we'll just kind of follow suit with what we've got. But like I said, I'll try to get you down there, at least kind of show it to you. But just like we did last time, I thought that video when I edited it worked out fairly well. Sort of commentate, start, narrate what I think we're going to do. And then walk you through it again. Not sure we can film good down there. But uh, this sort of explains what we're going for. Alright, so I'm under the truck. It's uh, pretty awkward filming angles. First things I want to highlight. This is the passenger side right there. You see where the oil filter was? I just blocked it. Now you can see the threads. That is our oil filter location. If you come up right below the oil filter, there's a bolt, which I can't point to because I'm holding a light. <laughs> but uh, I just blocked it. You can see it now. That is a bolt that goes from the engine block through the transmission and out the backside. So that's kind of what we will be working with there. And then that is going to occur in multiple other locations as we scale towards the top of the transmission. Coming in right here though, real easy to see. You see transmission, bracket, and bolt. If we follow that bracket, it goes over here and it bolts to the engine block right above the oil pan. And then it looks like there's some bracket that kind of ties in with the motor mounts or heat shield or something. Uh, that, of course, is going to need to come off. Hopefully the oil doesn't drip on the camera lens. Well, we can say that as we sit here precariously dangling. But, speaking of that greasy, nasty inspection cover, dust shield, whatever you call it, there is the top bolt. The little guy, you can see the bracket bolt right at the bottom. You can see a bolt from the engine through the transmission right above it. There's a smaller bolt in the middle, right? That is what we will call bolt number one on the inspection cover. Bolt number two on the inspection cover is going to be right there. That's sort of where you see the antifreeze from the busted freeze plugs right down that casting line, if you will, the part line. That's going to be bolt two. Bolt three, equidistant, if you will, from that said part line. Then we get to the driver's side. You can see the bracket on the driver's side. And I'm going to have to slide, cover the camera. Hope the creeper just rolled over cardboard, which is terrible. We may never get out of here. Uh, what you're looking at now is not where I needed you to be. But rather, right there. I'm just going to run with this angle for you. My sincerest apologies. This is the bolt that we left off on. That is the bracket. It runs up kind of in a different shape than the passenger side because of the starter. Where you see the Chrysler Corp and Denso sticker. I'm kind of throwing light on there. That's the bottom of our starter. Again, that top bolt, we have pretty good access to you from the engine bay now. We may take advantage of that. But there will be a second bolt on the starter right here at the bottom, really easy to get to. And then right here, in the same cavity, we should have our fourth inspection cover bolt, right? So what I'm thinking I'm going to do is probably get the starter off. There will be some electrical connections, too, we need to deal with. Get the inspection cover off. And then kind of update you on the sizes, because some of these are a little greasy. I'm not quite 100% sure what size they'll be just yet, but this is as it is before we start work on it. And again, from the bottom down here, we're going to need to get the inspection cover, get the brackets. We may leave the brackets for now, just kind of for added support and security. Uh, we'll figure it all out as we go. But starter, inspection cover, those are definitely coming off. And then we will attempt to come in and get uh, everything off of our torque converter. So uh, just thinking ahead here, if we do need to lower the transmission any. That's, can't tell you how awkward this is on the creeper. But right there, that is the transmission mounts. And I don't envision us having to do anything, but if we do, that's where we'll need to jostle. Those two trans cooler lines that continuously run through the engine bay that I refer to as a shiny silver, there's one, the other is right there. It kind of gets greasy towards the backside. Uh, your selector shaft seal 
I'm not sure what this grease is from, actually, but the selector shaft seal on Torque Flight is notorious for leaking. Uh, that could be an issue. Shouldn't really have to do much in this area if we need to disconnect anything. That's kind of all of our throttle valve connections and everything. Uh, but again, the plan is to leave the transmission in here. And uh, that's really about the best I can film for you. If this wasn't a four-wheel drive, I could probably do a better job. But, you know, there's kind of the whole front axle there. And with a giant camera <laughs> on the back, it is a nightmare. One of the things, I think I highlighted this in the start of the video. A couple, couple miles back, treated the truck to a deep aluminum pen. Uh, and one of the big selling points is that sucker right there, drain. <laughs> that's, uh, that makes your life a little bit easier. Now, interesting right here. I believe this would be the factory fuel line, so you can kind of see it's got that braided look to it right below the safety. And if you recall, that's what we pulled off of our uh, driver's side fuel rail. So that's cool. We located that guy. <laughs> and, uh, it looks like it does go in through convoluted tubing. And coming this way, we're back. <laughs> Where we started, uh, let's see here, anything of note here, I will say roughly from back here, this is just if you watch this before you tackle anything, it was around this spot in the truck going that direction that I ran a really long extension and could finally get access to that passenger side collector uh, for the Y pipe. The oxygen sensor is going to be right there, you can kind of see the wires and that nice loom. But uh, with that said, I'm going to quit rambling and try to get some work done here. Um, <laughs> like I said, if I had a lift, uh, if I had like a film crew, we would do better, but you know, most of you aren't going to have a lift or a film crew, so you would be in the same position, so maybe it'll hopefully be beneficial and helpful to you. If we help one people, we did all right. One person, a couple of people. <laughs> but, uh, I'll try to get this stuff off, update you on the sizes, we will take it from there. Well, it's a uh, rainy Wednesday, and a dot sure how well you can tell what's going on the long chrome thing that's a two foot breaker bar and then i've got two three inch extensions going into a 6.58 socket out of all the things that i could plan ahead for and that i thought would give me trouble the starter not one of them uh, i can tell you right now the bolts i've since removed since i last filmed have all been really <laughs> really torqued pretty good and uh, it's almost like we got in the gorilla territory the problem i have is i thought this was a pretty good shot from up top i run into the same issue with everything in place i.e firewall brake booster and engine i don't really have a good line of sight to get to that thing <laughs> and uh, ordinarily i'd say like screw it and i'd fire up the compressor and bust out an impact i would kind of be in the same position although i'm not sure i could even get the gun in there uh, what I thought would work is right here where you can't really see it. Let me try <laughs> work the magic here. So you can see the first extension. There comes the second extension. It's black and chrome and then right at the top for your viewing convenience is a black socket. Now I'm of the mindset currently that all of my half inch sockets are six point. This is one of those few scenarios where a 12 point socket would be nice because essentially if I disconnect from the breaker bar, right, I can spin this extension combination by hand with the socket and we can get it on the bolt right up at the top of the starter. With the breaker bar in place, I can't rotate it towards the pan or the frame rail and get anything to catch. Uh, obviously if we could do that and I could just break it free. Uh, I think we'd be home free. I'd switch this out to your ratchet, get it going. If I could spin it off by hand, I would. It's also really hard for me to get to the electrical connections in part because of our trans cooler lines. You can kind of see those two lines right there. Hoping the, that's just gonna fall, isn't it? Something's gotten in my eye, but anyway. Right here are trans cooler lines, right? You think, well, those are, yeah, they're kind of in the way. Well, the bracket that would allow me to move them to gain better access, which keep in mind, they are hard lines, but you, know, you can sort of manipulate them here and there a bit. The bracket looks to be under this bolt. It's between the bolt and the starter. And it's one of those things, you just kind of scratch your head, <laughs> you know? But uh, that's what I've been dealing with here for the last little bit that I've gotten to work on the truck. It's real simple. I know exactly what to do. I just don't really have anything that can seemingly do it. So uh, I don't know if I'm going to need to buy like a long 5.8 socket. You know, it's 12 point half inch drive and maybe that would be the issue. The, the problem is if we had the long socket, you can't get a breaker bar in here. It's not long enough. And then with a 3.8 
three inch extension or even like a stubby adapter type, I don't know that I have space between the head of the starter and these lines to do anything. <laughs> so I don't know. I'm going to be trying to figure it out. But again, out of everything I could plan for that I thought would be a problem, I didn't think the starter would be an issue. Biggest issue with the starter is if you like drop it, you know, if it like comes down and you tug on the wires maybe more than you would like. But it's a mess. Uh, something I might try to do is tackle these heat shields. I'm assuming it's that bolt. Uh, I was running with the assumption everything was SAE. My half inch is too big on it. And uh, so I don't know if we need to drop down a metric or what. But anyway, uh, this is where I'm at. Just wanted to update you again. This stuff is real world. <laughs> it's not like magic happens behind the scenes. A lot of times I run into stupid crud like this. So. I'm going to try to figure something out. I'm hoping and praying that I have a 12-point socket, and that might just be the fix. If I don't, I may have to bring one in, uh, which is unfortunate. <laughs> so, I'm also thinking I'm going to buy myself some half-inch extensions. All I have is 3-inch. Uh, a couple of sets here and there, I've got 3-inch, and I kind of string them together from said sets. So uh, We might soon be upgrading that department as well. But. It's kind of just a pain in the butt. You know what to do. It's easy, but you just can't get to it to do it. So I'll uh, let you know what works out, and we will catch you later. All right, so this looks a little different than when you were here last time, and that's because that bolt is actually freed up. And as we snake our way back over here, uh, as fate would have it, I told you I needed a 12-point socket. Well, first ever set, the Craftsman. A little uh, cheap stuff you get when you're a kid, right? Boom, half inch starts with 5 eighths, and it's all 12 point. Uh, which again, 6 point, you know, I personally kind of prefer, but 12 points versus 6, you get a little bit easier mobility in terms of swinging and catching on the sides. So we were able to break it free. I uh, had a very, very narrow space about yay big that we could actually articulate the breaker bar that broke it free then i swapped over here this barely clears i mean you can see the head of the ratchet in there you're either hitting the starter body with the handle or we've got the head bumping in the trans cooler lines and then the best part is while you ratchet this free i've got frame rail to front diff which is virtually you know what like two and a half turns of the socket maybe and then the catch is you can't do it like this you've got to come in with your spare hand that's currently holding the camera and pin the extensions down so you can hopefully still turn the bolt so i can't film this but i'm going to get that off the rest of the way and then my plan is you can see this bottom one was a stud right we just took the nut off the washer i can't get yet I uh, probably could if I took my gloves off or had a screwdriver, but that'll kind of keep this in place. And my plan, once I pull the bolt, is to let the starter fall. Hopefully it clears, you know, the front drive shaft, but I don't know. Never done it. If it does, I'll just kind of let it rest in place. That'll make it way easier for me to articulate the electrical connections. I think there should be two. Uh, once I free those, then we can kind of slide it off of this bottom stud. In fact, I might even put the nut back on before I flop it down. That way I don't smash my face and we don't put a strain on our electrical connections. But 12-point uh, socket, that's what we needed. That's what the doctor ordered. It made it happen for me. So I'm ecstatic about that. There's a rainbow outside. All is good in the world. <laughs> and uh, we're going to hopefully get this starter off tonight. All right, still trying to get the starter off, believe it or not. I'm trying to get some play in the uh, trans cooler lines, which is proven to be more difficult than you would think as well. Before I forget, I want to highlight this. Something I've done here, you can see the kind of gold zinc plated bracket down there. And there's a stud coming out of the top. Right here, 9 16 little crown nut, washer and nut combination. And then there's one below it uh, that you can't really see too great from this angle, but rest assured it is there. And the silver colored bracket, that actually bolts. There's a tab down there that you can see where it looks like there's another piece of silver. It bends at 90 degrees. It's got one of those press-in cable tie holders, and that holds your main wire. That actually, if you trace it this way, turns out to be your positive battery cable. And if you run it back all the other way that direction, it's gonna run right into the starter. So, um, I was trying to get the trans cooler lines done. There's brackets. Uh, I think that's really the only one connected to the block, aside from the one at the back. And my light back there is kinda dying the old Astro. But, um, I'm just trying to get play. It's the way they engineered the starter. 
there's the plug which I've gotten off and it sits up about this high let's say just at the base of the A right is going to be the plug and then way down here is the nut that sits on the stud that's your charge wire to the battery and that's kind of a problem because you can't really get anything down around it and the starter kind of recesses up and in type of a deal so uh, it's just a total mess. It's way, way more time consuming than it should be for a simple starter, you know, pull or swap or whatever. Uh, I'm sure this would be even more enjoyable if the exhaust manifolds were there. So, uh, don't quite remember it being this difficult on the old 360s, you know, like this, I don't know if it's Magnum specific or there's slight design changes. I'm sure the trans cooler lines have a lot to do with it. But, uh, anyhow, I'm going to get back at it. Just wanted to update you on that bracket down there. And again, the studs come out of the block, sort of right there. You can see the top one. The second one is going to be down there, almost where that would rest in place as it was. And again, this will be the fastening hardware. All right, so this is far from an ideal angle for me to be filming in, but I uh, should be able to get the job done. The starter is out, as you can see. And the Astro is dead. We switched over to the Braun <laughs> right there, though. That, I've put the uh, nut back on, that is the terminal, the stud, that we've got to disconnect from. Turns out that was 13 millimeter, half inch, just would not cooperate. Uh, there is, of course, our connection right there that we have up top. Once, of course, we were able to get the starter out of our way, <laughs> we were able to deal with this thing. This thing being the inspection plate, the inspection cover, the dust cover, whatever you want to call it. And, uh... As I precariously dodge that, <laughs> try to get you over here. Which, uh, hey, if we ever hit it big on YouTube, start making some money, I believe a lift would be would be nice, at least for filming. It's actually isn't too bad on the truck, but uh, we don't have any jack stands or anything. It's just you know lifted. But what the dust cover does is it, of course, covers up this area here. Now you can see a bolt right there these are going to be you need a 9 16 socket for these I always when you hear me say bolt and i'm referencing sizes i'm usually referring to the socket so my apologies there uh they're not torqued too bad of course so you know since we are under the vehicle if your feet are towards the tailgate you're going to need to go that way right towards the driver's side to break them free i've turned that one free already this one i have not now you're thinking okay wait you know there's just two bolts Nope, there's four, at least as best as I know. That's how it's always been on the old school stuff. Should be the same here. The catch is, in order to remove these, like you're sitting there and you're thinking, okay, wait, you know, that's nice. You know, look at look at you here. You could probably get you know, a socket in there, an extension, whatever drive side you want, plenty of space. That's 100% correct. You can recreate that on the driver's side if you're so inclined. That one right there, you're thinking, ooh, you know, we, we'd have to have a, a wrench and get lucky and try not to slip off and cut our hands all over that aluminum edge right there. Well, here's what you're going to have to do. You're going to have to go to the front of the crank. <laughs> Again, haven't checked that ahead of time. You know, I know what 440s are, but I'm not sure what the 5T Magnum is. So, essentially what we're going to need to do, though, is turn the crankshaft. Uh, when you're going to turn the motor over manually and you've got it built or assembled or it's functional or whatever, it'll be a little easier to turn if you remove the plugs or a plug even uh, will make a big difference for you. And essentially you'll want to have this one, let's say that you've picked to work right here on the passenger side because you feel like it's the most spacious or comfortable for you or that's where your tray is, whatever. Break that free. If you want to, if you can get to another one and break it free and spin it out, go ahead and do that. If not, go crank the engine over and wait until you get something lined up in this spot again you're going to need to rinse and repeat again there should be four of them uh, i'm going to try to find this looks like a good spot on the frame rail here <laughs> the difference between the brawn and the astro the brawn uh, does not have the little adjustable foot which when you get used to securing the astro that's kind of a problem but anyway i'm going to try to switch the camera to my that's not a good idea. Let's come over here again. Okay. Now I left this in place specifically so you could see it. Um, it just really is a nightmare filming under this vehicle. With this camera anyway. Maybe with a smaller camera it wouldn't be bad. But that's the inspection cover. The side over here where there's a cutout. You can kind of see it right there. That is going to be for the starter. This bottom 
bolt here or you know hole that's going to slide over the stud that's in the transmission which if i tilt that up <laughs> you can see it right there this little piece i'm kind of running it in front of that is our stud that is where this hole is going to line up uh, bear with me as we try to film at weird angles again on a creeper <laughs> but uh, this is why you've got to remove the starter to remove the engine. You know, I always hear people say you don't have to do that, and you don't if you don't have the inspection cover. Uh, it's good practice, though, to have the inspection cover. So uh, this top one is going to be the holes, and, of course, we've got our tiny little bolts there. I'm going to throw those all back into place. <laughs> but you'll note at the top there's a tab here and a tab on that side. And, uh, again, this is just... A film crew would be super helpful. Second, second set of hands. Uh, right there. See that long thing that comes up, sort of tip of my glove? And then we've got another one right there. Those are the tabs. That's what you really have to articulate. But uh, I've got a cramp in my arm from holding this camera underneath the car. I'm going to get everything moved, cleaned up, and uh, take it from there. Also, the hook, which is that green thing you see. I used that to hold the starter when I had to run out and get the 13 millimeter. So uh, always support it. The front diff if you're a four-wheel drive, you can actually rest it there pretty easy. But uh, try try to keep it clean if possible. But again, we're ready to start pulling those bolts. That's what I'm going to do because that's more fun than sitting here holding a camera. All right. So just before I forget to film it, that is my setup here at the front of the engine. We've got a, a long two-foot breaker bar, short extension, and then that is an inch and a quarter socket that you're going to need. Uh, basically, it's just going to be trial and error. You'll kind of figure out how far you need to swing it every time. But again, there should be four bolts. We'll find out if there's more. I'm thinking there's still four. Should equate to the old school stuff. But uh, on the flip side there, you need a 916 socket. Break them free and spin them out. I'll try to remember to show them to you. They're very, very short bolts with fine threads. So we'll take a look at that in just a second and see where we're at. All right, so once again, not ideal filming conditions, but this is the fourth and final bolt. And essentially, what you're probably going to run into is the same thing I ran into, where as you try to remove it, you're spinning. And uh, that's not good. The way I worked around it, came in, just got a uh, 916 boxed end wrench, was able to use the edge of the block right there to kind of catch it. And that, of course, allows me to come in and get everything out by hand. So. We're now free from there. I've been trying to examine the motor mounts and the heat shields. <laughs> and, uh, I'm thinking it's pretty late and I got work tomorrow. Probably just gonna call it a night here. But the starter is gone. There you got a good look at the cavity. I've got the nut back in place. The gold thing up there, as you can sort of see, is the bracket. That didn't really help any, but uh, you see the two trans cooler lines and then that gold or silver looking thing is the bracket. Those bolts right there, which again, I can't, my hands are too dirty to really cover the lens, but that would be our bottom engine to transmission bolt. It's going to be a 5 8 socket that you'll need for that. And then coming around to this side, we have the same thing right there. But uh, that's about it uh, for tonight. Starter, gone. Uh, inspection plate, dust cover, gone. <laughs> I've gone ahead and on those brackets, if you can see one, right there. I've gone ahead and I put that uh, half inch socket headed bolt, again I'm using socket sizes here for you, um, back in through the motor mount because I'm thinking on these the spool type, this passenger side the bolt is here and the you know nut is on the back side if that makes any sense. All right, so just kind of planning ahead here. This is the driver's side you're currently looking at. This is obviously transmission over here, uh, radiator front of the vehicle up that direction. So we're looking towards the front at the motor mount. The bolt on this one, uh, you've got the bolt head towards the back of the truck or the tailgate. It runs through, I'm trying to make sure I don't hit my head on anything. And I think you can kind of see that shadowy looking thing. There's like the white backdrop and then something not focused that's black. That is the back end of the bolt. The nut would be on the grill side. So we kind of have the bolts running opposite directions. Case in point. 
Again, this is why I don't film anything down here while I'm working. It just <laughs> wouldn't happen. Uh, this is the passenger side, and you can kind of see I'm blocking the view of the bolt and the nut. You can see the orange factory inspection mark. The bolt head on the passenger side is going to face the grill. The nut is going to face the tailgate, so they're just kind of flipped. But you can kind of see the rubber pad that would sort of be like your insulator or damper. And then the metal piece is where the orange marker is. <clears throat> and it runs over here. There's, I believe, three bolts for the motor mount. You've got the first one that we took the bracket off of, a second one hidden by the L shape, and then the third one sort of up at the top, again, half inch socket for all of those. We're gonna try, again, I haven't dealt with spool mounts much, so I think we can just pull that bolt and uh, then leave the motor mounts in place. The heat shield is what I was wanting to get off. Uh, that's the whole issue for me kind of investigating it. I'm kind of thinking it's sandwiched between that top bolt and the block. <laughs> I could be mistaken, but instead of messing with that, I think it's probably best we just pull the motor. So, uh, And of course, before we do that, we want to probably break these two bolts free. You know, we've got the one right there and then the one right here with the trans cooler bracket line just to the side of it. And then we're going to want to support the transmission. I picked up a transmission jack specifically for this. So I'm going to set it kind of underneath where you see the b and I'll have a, a sheet of plywood on top of that. And then basically I think with the intake out we can come in and get the back bolts, kind of, you know, transmission to engine from that side. But uh, I'll try to highlight that as we get there. But again, that's kind of my train of thought moving forward. But main thing for tonight, we got the four bolts back here. Uh, again, kind of holding the converter in place. And now we're pretty much ready, ready to wrap up kind of the final steps of removal. So uh, we will work towards that, and I will catch you back here in the next one.